<laughs> and Dr. Jim's going to talk about I Don't Have a Clue. Excellent. Thank you very much. A sense of mystery. I love that. And how long is the speech? Five to seven. So let's talk about presentations, shall we? we? We live in a modern environment. We work in a modern workplace. And whenever we get together, how do we communicate? Do we write reports? Do we share reports with people? Do we, do we constantly go looking for binders to put our report in? I, probably a better question is, if somebody gave you a report today, walked up to you and handed you a report, what would you do with it? I would suspect that you probably promised to read it, right? I will get to that. Thank you very much. When would you read it? Think about your schedule. Think about what you did last week. When would you have time to sit down and, let's say, read a 20-page report? <laughs> Never. Okay. Uh, you, maybe, if you got lucky, but generally, we don't have time for that. So how do we communicate in a business setting? We use presentations. Fantastic. Presentations are actually a very effective way to take the message that you have and communicate it with a group of people. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Were you ever trained on how to give a presentation? You know, when you were in high school, was it like, I'm going to do home ec, I'm going to do PE, oh, and then I got my that presentation class I'm going to go to? Probably not. You know, if you went to college, if you went to university, was there a, you know, oh, man, I got to cram for that big presentation class final that I got? There's a PowerPoint part to it that looks like it's going to be rough. No. So basically, we've sort of been thrust into this role where we give presentations to people at work, and yet we've never really had any training on how to do it. But I'll tell you what, I'm willing to bet that just like me, you've sat through hundreds of presentations during your career. You've sat out there, a person sat up here, and they've gone through PowerPoint after PowerPoint after PowerPoint. So you may not have ever been trained on how to give a presentation, but I would argue that you probably know what a bad presentation looks like, right? What's a bad presentation? It doesn't hold your attention. <laughs> Second slide in, you don't really care what the person's going to say. You're just sort of hoping that they're going to sit down. Please, 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 get it over with. Or, these days, if you brought a laptop or a smartphone to it, you're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm on the 15th level of Angry Birds, and I've got a little time here. Perhaps I can. All right. So look, we don't have a lot of time together today, but let's just talk about this for a, a brief moment, okay? So if you think about what a presentation is, it's an opportunity for the speaker to connect with the audience, okay? Now, is every presentation exactly the same? And the answer is no, it's not. There's actually four different types of basic presentations that can be given. The first type of presentation is considered to be an informative presentation, which is a big and impressive word if you really think about it. But really, this is the type of presentation that you've probably been most exposed to. Back in high school, the teacher would walk in, would be in the front of the room, would turn and look at you, and then would give that type of presentation, right? Because the teacher had the knowledge. The teacher was going to talk to you for an hour, okay? And was going to be sharing the knowledge that the teacher had with you. So it's a powerful type of presentation. What other types of presentations are there? Well, do you guys know who uh, Billy, Billy Mays was? Okay, Billy Mays is sort of a famous person. He was the gentleman that you would see on late night TV commercials pushing products. Specifically, his favorite was OxyClean. And if you don't know about OxyClean, this is the most fantastic cleaning solution you've ever seen. It will clean everything. You put a bucket of water, put some OxyClean in it, whatever you got, put it in, poof, take it out, it's going to look new. And Billy was very good at doing this. He was so good they made a TV show that he started in called, I think, like Pitchman. Pitchman? Was that what it was? Okay, yeah. Um, that's a demonstrative speech. Okay, so the person who's speaking knows something. He's going to, he or she is going to demonstrate something for you. They're going to show you how something works. And take, you're going to come along for the ride. They're going to show you how it is. And at the end, because of their demonstration, they want to change the way that you see the world. They want you to do something because you saw them do something. They then want you to go out and do something. In the case of Billy Mays, worked out extremely well. He sold an awful lot of OxyClean. All right, so what's our third type of presentation here? The third type of presentation is considered to be the persuasive speech, which we know more commonly as being a motivational speaker, right? Now, these are the type of people who, when they give a presentation, what they want you to do is to follow them. What they're going to tell you 
is that the world that you live in isn't exactly the way you see it. They're going to want to get you to look at your world differently. Look at the world through their eyes. And when you do that, what they want you to do is to become dissatisfied with your life, with your world, with your job, with your spouse, whatever the story is, right? They want to get you upset enough that you'll actually make a change. Now there is, I, I promise you there's four types of speeches, right? So there is one left. And it's a humorous speech. Speaker, I guess I should say, to be more clear. Now the humorous speaker really isn't trying to get you to do anything. The humorous speaker, while that speaker is speaking, wants you to be entertained, wants you to be amused, doesn't necessarily want to change your world. Just while that person speaking wants you to enjoy the experience of listening to that particular speaker. So there's four types of speakers, four types of main speakers. My question to you is next time you give a speech to your team, to your boss, to your church, to a school, wherever, what type of speaker do you want to be? And I apologize because it's a trick question. <laughs> the correct answer is you don't necessarily want to be any one of those types of speakers. You really want to be a combination, probably, of all four of them, right? In a technical job, or probably at the office, you're probably more of an informative speaker than anything else, right? That's your primary one, okay? You have knowledge about something that's going on in your job that you want to share with everybody else at the office or another team or something along those lines. Now, what's interesting is if you're asking for the people in your audience to do something, which we often do, right? I want people, I want time, I want money, whatever you want. You're going to have to work into that just a little bit of that persuasive speaker, right? You want to portray the future as you see it. You want to make the people a little upset with the way their present is, and you want them to follow you or accept whatever your idea is so that you can lead them forward. So it's informative, it's persuasive, all right, that's all good. But you know, if I go and if I listen to you and you're both informative and persuasive, and at the end, I'm going, oh, well, that was good. But what an effort it was to listen to you. Because you had great information, but I had to keep staying with you. So you need to mix a little something extra into that. And I would suggest that humor is the thing that you don't want to leave out of your next speech, right? And you don't, it's not a humorous speech. You're not trying to get your business audience to laugh throughout your speech. <laughs> If so, you're doing something horribly, terribly wrong, right? Really, what you want to do is probably break up your speech as you transition from point to point with things that at least make people smile, grin, chuckle. What's going to happen, that'll give them a chance to remember what you just said and make it all stick. So the next time you give a presentation, even though you never had a course on it, now you know that there's four types of presentations. You know that you're probably not going to do just one of those types of presentations, but you can take the four types, you can combine them, in a way that best fits the audience that you're addressing to. And you're going to be fantastically successful next time you give a presentation. Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jim. Let's take about a minute to evaluate Dr. Jim's